I want to establish a couple agreed upon uh, precepts before I begin my argument. The witnesses use the uh, use probability incorrectly, but they use probability to argue argue why evolution is impossible. Put up a big number and be like, "Look at how big that number is. That means it couldn't have happened. It's so unlikely." To the witnesses, big numbers mean something didn't happen. It's an oversimplification, but you get it. The witnesses also don't believe in predestination. Um, so things happen randomly. We can, we can agree on this, I think, that uh, when someone uh, has a child, when they die, and the span of time in between those two time periods would happen randomly. We should see a random distribution of numbers, right? Things are random. Okay, so let me give you a hypothetical and then we'll uh, apply it. What would you think if I told you I won a lottery, uh, the lottery, and uh, the odds of winning that lottery were one in a billion. The odds of the mega million are one in 300 million, so far more unlikely is my win. Then I tell you not only did I win the lottery, one in a billion odds, but that the numbers have special significance to me. It's my birthday and my social security number. And then also, if you do some math, um, I, if you can rearrange it to uh, show it was also, I can rearrange these numbers and do a little math within a consistent formula to show you uh, when I got married uh, and when my kids were born. All of these numbers can be calculated out of this using a, a, a formula, a discrete formula. It's not a great analogy. It's kind of, kind of messy, but extremely improbable event who then on top of being numerically improbable, the numbers itself have special magical significance that is meaningful and can be calculated using a coherent formula. Sounds like gobbledygook. Let's talk about what I'm actually uh, slowly working my way towards. The age of the patriarchs in the Bible. So uh, these are the people leading up from Adam to Noah, and then from Noah to Abraham. I don't know something weird about that. Uh, the pre-flood ages. Uh, so when they had their kid, when they died, and also the number in between, like you subtract one from the other, so the time span between child and death. For the ones before the flood, none of them, none of those ages end, or all of those ages end in 0, 5, 7, 2, or 9. That's weird. That's really, really weird. It should be completely random. It should be completely random. That's a chance of one in a billion, one in a billion that this would happen this way. That is stretching credulity to say that, yes, this is literal. All these numbers are literal. If even one person deviated from this formula, the odds would be dramatically lower. It doesn't know. And not only that, these numbers, uh, 0, 5, 7, 2, and 9, have numerological significance to the ancient Israelites and people from Mesopotamia. And also, all of these ages conform to a formula where they can be made up of those numbers I just listed um, using base 60, which was the, the, um, uh, the Babylonian preferred base system and also therefore adopted by the Israelites. That's extremely unlikely. So one in a billion, and also all of the numbers just so happen to conform to the magic numbers that the Israelites thought had special meaning. And also the ages can be calculated using a formula that uses those magic numbers to create the larger number. Um, I will link to the paper. Uh, the paper is from uh, a Christian 
um, they are they're not arguing that the, this is a sign of um, lack of divine inspiration for the Bible, but they are talking about what the significance might mean. If you're not a biblical literalist, this isn't really a problem, but the witnesses are biblical literalists. Everything is literally history and without error and without significant tampering. Now, here's why this is all very important. Um, you need to do several, several things, some really impressive mental gymnastics to make this plausible, not believable, just even plausible. My lottery example from earlier, special magic numbers and also one in a billion chance. That's nuts. I wouldn't believe that. That sounds crazy. This sounds crazy. Everyone just so happened to have a kid and die and the span in between. And it all happens to conform to this magical numerological system. That didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. It's not literal. I'm not like this doesn't. This isn't proof that the Bible was. Uh, that there is no God or anything, but it does prove that whoever wrote this had theological intent when they put these numbers in here. These numbers mean something. They were meant to say something. They were not literal. And the witnesses use these numbers to calculate spans of time, which they use for their uh, wacky Bible math. That's how they got 1975. If we add up all the ages of the patriarchs, uh, the end of the 6,000 years will be 1975. Those aren't real numbers. They're made up. Made up for a specific meaning, but they're not literal. They're not history. They didn't happen. If you as a witness say, I don't believe in evolution because look at the probability of this. It's exceedingly unlikely. Therefore, it didn't happen. You got a problem, because if you're being consistent, the odds of this happening are ridiculously small. I don't know how you would calculate the probability of numbers also conforming to a um, numerological, theological, significant meaning. Like, their randomness can be calculated. That's one in a billion. I don't know how you calculate the other thing, but that's really unlikely. That's wildly unlikely. That's nuts. And then if you look at the numbers, like you can see patterns. You can see patterns of like, oh, it's 60 times 7 times 5. 60 times 10 times 10. <laughs> These are numbers made up of other significant numbers in a math formula. All of them can be calculated using just these numbers. I'm belaboring this point. I just want to drill home like there are layers and layers and layers on top of the just straight probability that this is a random set of numbers, a random set of events. One in a billion, and then all of this on top of it. It did not happen literally this way. Doesn't mean you have to throw out the Bible. Doesn't mean you, you're like, oh, I guess God doesn't exist because that's unlikely. But what you must admit is that the person who wrote this, or edited it, or redacted it later, did so with theological intention, which means either the text has been significantly altered from its original form, or was originally written not to be read literally. And if you are, again, a biblical literalist, it all happened exactly as it was said, except for the parts that are problematic in which we will say it's metaphor. do that a lot or we redefine words but basically literalists all happened exactly as uh, it says you get you have to discard that worldview you have to it's not just one entry it's this entire list this entire genealogy from adam to abraham conforms to this now the the post-flood ones it, it drops the the probability down uh, the post flood ones are one and a half a million, one in five hundred thousand. So more likely, but again, conforming to theological, a theological framework, and also interesting that it's 
pre and post flood. That has theological significance too. You want to know something interesting? A list of really long lived people from uh, another culture that used base 60, as these numbers are calculated in, who were all into numerology, Sumeria which influenced Babylon and Assyria, and by extension, the Israelites, because they lived in that area and were conquered by them and traded with them, and you know, the uh, osmosis of ideas. The, the king's list here, uh, Al Alulim, 28,800 years. Al Alngar, 36,000 years. Enmen Luana, 43,200 years. You get the picture. You know what happens in Assyrian mythology? Utnapishtim saves a bunch of uh, animals in a boat when he's warned by a god that a flood is going to happen because the gods were annoyed with humanity. Not because they were evil, because they were loud and they're keeping the gods awake. So they flooded the world to kill all of them. So Utnapishtim builds an ark, saves, saves animals and is also rewarded with immortality, so we diverge from the uh, Noah version of this. But you know what happens after that? their flood? The lengths of the reigns of all of the kings drop significantly, just like the patriarchal list in the Bible. Post-flood, all the people afterwards progressively get shorter lives. Interesting. Seems someone done plagiarized their neighbor and or conqueror and or trading partner. If you are going to do the mental gymnastics to tell yourself, oh, well, no, it must have happened that way. Don't use low probability when you argue against evolution. You can't use that argument if you're being consistent, because if you're being consistent, this didn't happen either. And I must once again emphasize that those numbers that the, the witnesses and creationists use for the probability of something evolving by chance are stupid. They, they make up numbers. They, they, that's not how... Those are not real numbers. They're coming up with some wild thing. That's not the probability of life existing. That's them trying to come up with a big, crazy number. Like, oh, yeah, that, can't happen. that couldn't have happened. It's funny. I find it very funny and absurd. I never noticed this. Because you wouldn't. Because you're not reading critically. You're just reading it, and your eyes are glazing over. And honestly, this chapter, Genesis chapter 5, is really boring. Canaan lived for 70 years and then became father to Mahalal. And became father to Mahalal, Canaan lived for 840 years. And he became father to sons and daughters. So all the days of Canaan amounted to 910 years and then he died. All of those ages end in zero. Not impossible for one guy, but it's kind of unlikely. It's kind of weird that he, all of these, uh, that these major life events happened on a, on a round number ending in zero. Kind of weird. Like I said, looking at this whole list, it obviously has theological meaning. I don't know what it is, and frankly, I don't really care. What matters to me is that it's obviously theological. It's obviously incredibly improbable if this was a real list of people and life events. Those happen randomly. Now, again, another uh, these are the, the witnesses are unique uh, in being biblical literalists that they... Um, God does not predestine things. If you were believe in predestination, you could say, well, God predestined their lives to be this, to impart some sort of meaning uh, to us as a lesson. The witnesses don't have that excuse. It has to all be random, or God is fiddling, and God can't fiddle because the all of witness theology hangs on the notion of free will and God not foreordaining stuff and not tampering with free will and, you know, Randomness ain't random. One in a billion is not random. So, uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, if you, if you want to ask a witness a, a hard-hitting question, ask him about the ages of the patriarchs and why they just so happen to be ridiculously unlikely and also conform to a uh, numerological theological framework. Very hard for a biblical literalist to explain. 
Um, I'll link to the paper. You can look at the, the table uh, that shows the, the math to come up with each of these things and, and lays it all out. Um, I don't think I have anything more to say. I think I've really, you know, I've covered my point well. So hopefully you learned something new. I thought that was super duper interesting. Um, <laughs> this isn't normally how you use the Bible to like disprove witness beliefs, but uh, it's really hard to deny this. Um, there's only a couple excuses that you can give. There's only a couple reasons you can give. And none of them work well or at all within the witness theology. So you got a problem. You got a real problem. Big problem. Um, Jafar. <laughs> uh, that wasn't a quote. I just realized I sounded like Iago from Jafar. You got a problem, Jafar. Big problem. A big... <laughs> My, uh, yeah. Of Disney references. Well, thank you for watching. I hope that that was interesting. Uh, probably new. It was new to me. Uh, I haven't really heard this talked about much uh, on in general. So new to me. Might be new to you. I think it's interesting. So enjoy. Uh, yeah, and the link to the papers below in the description. I'll see you next time.